This is a follow-up of a patient who had a fracture two days ago. Good morning, sir. How was your leg since the fracture? So, after, after the fracture, I went home, everything seemed to be okay, but then all of a sudden it started swelling a lot. And I feel like it's very painful. I can't even touch it like this. And I can't move it at all. And I feel like it's very hard here. Is it the same type of symptoms that I told you that if you do have them, you should come back? Remember those three signs that I told you that if it feels hardy, like woody, and there's pain which is out of proportion, you should come and tell me. Okay, it's the signs you told me about. Come with me to the table, I'm gonna examine you. So, um, doctor, I'm just a bit worried here. Can you just tell me what you're looking for? What I'm looking for is any swelling or any woodiness like you spoke about or if there's any pain on passive stretch. So doctor, what do you think the problem is? Remember when you left, I told you of these symptoms that when you do experience them, you should come. What I'm, what I'm thinking you might be having here, it's a compartment syndrome, which is an orthopedic emergency. We really, really need to deal with it promptly. Describe the symptoms of compartmental syndrome. Pallor, pain, paresthesia, paralysis, pulselessness, and poikilothermia. These are all considered to be late signs, however. Do not wait for all of these signs before jumping to a diagnosis. On physical exam, pain with passive stretch paresthesia and hyposthesia, paralysis, palpable swelling, as well as absent peripheral pulses are all telltale signs of compartment syndrome. Three hallmark features include pain out of proportion to injury, a witty hard leg, pain on patches stretch. Investigation is that should be done. Imaging such as radiographs should be done to rule out fractures. Compartment pressure me measurements should also be done. Indications for these measurements include polychroma patients, patients who are not alert or unreliable, inconclusive physical exam findings. Also, certain positive clinical findings should prompt emergent operative intervention without the need for compartmental measurement. A solid state transducer, intracompartmental catheter or STIC device should be used to do this measurement. On this slide, the techniques for compartmental pressure measurements 
are shown below. The entry points for each compartment are also clearly stated. This slide shows the technique for compartmental pressure measurement for the deep posterior compartment as well as the superficial compartment. Diagnosis is based primarily on physical exam findings in patients with an intact mental status. Intracompartmental pressure of 30 millimeters of mercury is generally accepted as the value for diagnosis. Treatment can be split up into non-operative and operative measures. As for non-operative measures, observation alone should be included in patients with a diastolic differential pressure of over 30 millimeters of mercury. Also, patients who present with findings not consistent with compartment syndrome are also under observation. Loosening of a circumferential dressing as well as elevation for five minutes and reassessment should be done in patients before fasciotomy. As for operative management, emergency fasciotomies of all four compartments should be done. Indications include clinical presentations consistent with compartment syndrome, as well as compartment pressures within 30 millimeters mercury of diastolic blood pressure. Contraindications would be missed compartment syndrome. Special considerations would be pediatric patients. Children are often unable to verbalize their feelings. If suspicious, perform compartmental pressure measurements under sedation. Compartment syndrome fasciotomy of the leg. Anterolateral incisions, as well as a posterior medial incision, should be made, as seen on the diagram above. The anterolateral incision is a transverse fascial opening, anterior and posterior to the septum. Once this is done, open the anterior compartment, followed by the lateral compartment, being careful of the superficial peroneal nerve. As for the posterior medial incision, one should be careful of the saphenous nerve. A transverse opening in the fascia is made, posterior and anterior to the septum. Once this is made, open the superficial posterior compartment followed by the deep posterior compartment. The following slide shows an emergent fasciotomy of all four compartments. Detail is shown for the two vertical incisions that shall be made, both the anterior lateral incision as well as the posterior medial incision. Postoperative management. Dressing changes followed by a delayed primary closure or squid grafting at three to seven days post decompression normally takes place. The pros of the surgery is it's easy to perform and it provides effective intracompartmental pressure relief. The cons, however, is the fact that two lateral incisions have to be made. In conclusion, we have learned what compartment syndrome is the intrinsic and extrinsic causes of compartment syndrome, the sites that compartment syndrome normally affects, focused on the lower leg, followed by anatomy of the lower leg, as well as presentation, including the six Ps under which symptoms are hallmark features of compartment syndrome. We have also found what to look for on physical exam, investigations that need to be done, how to do these techniques, as well as diagnosis and treatment, both non-operative and operative managements. We hope this lecture has given you more insight to what compartment syndrome is and how to deal with a patient in future who comes into your ward with compartment.